today, it feels like we're on a bit of a quest. We're digging deep into finding, well, maybe the perfect network attached storage OS for Proxmox home lab setup. You know, that sort of ideal all-in-one solution, something that handles streaming movies, uh, securing backups, everything you need it to do. And Proxmox is such a great base for virtualization, isn't it? But uh, what really jumped out from your notes was how often the NAS OS choice itself came up. Like, it's the thing that can genuinely make or break the experience, even with Proxmox running things. It really shows you where the uh, the rubber meets the road with storage, I guess. So let's picture the setup we're talking about today, based on what you sent over. An HPC Perliant DL20 Gen 9 running Proxmox, naturally. And for storage, you've got two bigs, 6TB SAS drives for the actual data, plus a faster 1TB SSD for the OS and uh, services. And the goals you laid out for this NAS are pretty clear. It absolutely needs to support Apple Time Machine. That's non-negotiable. Plus, provide solid RAID 1 redundancy. You want that safety net. Act as a reliable file server, obviously, for movies, music, all that stuff. And critically, stream smoothly. We're talking high-end gear here, an LG OLED C4 TV, that Bang & Olufsen system you mentioned. It needs to keep up. So yeah, it's definitely not just about storing files. It's about making everything feel, I don't know, connected, effortless. Yeah, those are ambitious goals for sure. And look, what comes through loud and clear from all those home lab threads and research you gathered is, well, there's no single perfect NASA OS. Not really. The idea of perfect isn't one size fits all here. It's about what aligns perfectly with your priorities. You know, is it bulletproof data integrity above everything else? Or maybe it's the flexibility, mixing drive sizes, running Docker containers easily. Each choice, it's almost like picking a philosophy for your storage. Understanding why you need what you need, that's maybe the key insight. But having said that, there are definitely a few options that consistently bubble up to the top. They're reliable, they're viable, and those are the ones we're really going to focus on in this deep dive. Okay, right. Let's start unpacking that. How about we begin with uh, a real veteran, True NAS. Your sources definitely paint it as the solid workhorse. It's got this incredibly stable reputation in the Proxmox world. Seems versatile too, runs well as a VM inside Proxmox or, you know, bare metal if you prefer keeping things separate. But I wonder, does that robustness sometimes mean it's like harder to learn for someone new to home labbing? Or are the basic features pretty straightforward? That's a fair point. TrueNest is powerful, no doubt. And a lot of that power comes from ZFS, which yes, it does have its own concepts you need to grasp. But honestly, for the basics file serving, time machine backups, it's remarkably straightforward to get going. TrueNAS really leans into ZFS. That file system is famous for uh, its strong data integrity features, copy on write, check summing. It basically means every bit of data gets verified, which helps protect against that silent data corruption nobody wants. Now, that robustness is fantastic, but it's also why ZFS can be a bit um, resource hungry especially RAM, you know, for its cache, the RC, and CPU too, for all those integrity checks, particularly if it's under heavy load. Which leads to a really important tip from the community, especially if you run it as a VM, like in this scenario. The big recommendation is often to pass through your storage controller, an HBA, right, a host bus adapter. Basically, you dedicate a card connecting the physical drives directly to that TrueNAS VM. You bypass the software layers. This gives the VM almost native performance, like it's running on bare metal. Super important for demanding stuff, like streaming high bitrate media or ZFS doing its thing. And yeah, just echoing that advice about media formats, stick to friendly ones, avoids transcoding headaches. Nobody wants buffering on that beautiful LG OLED. Oh, absolutely not. Buffering on the OLED. That's <laughs> like the <laughs> ultimate home lab sin, right? But okay, avoiding transcoding is ideal. What if though? What if? someone does have a more, let's say, eclectic mix of file formats. Are there any clever ways these NAS OCs handle that on the fly transcoding more efficiently? Or is it really just best practice to, you know, stick rigidly to MP4, MKV? It's a really good question. Look, TrueNAS itself doesn't really do the transcoding. It pairs well with media servers like Plex or Jellyfin that can do it. But the consensus overwhelmingly is that avoiding it at the source, meaning having your files in the right format to begin with, is always, always better. Why is avoiding it so critical? Well, think of it like this. Transcoding is like asking your server to translate a movie from, say, Russian into English in real time, sentence by sentence, just so your TV can understand it. That takes a ton of CPU power. It can absolutely bog down your server, potentially starving your other VMs of resources. So by using device-friendly formats, H.264, H.265, usually in an MP4 or MKV container, you're not just stopping buffering. You're letting your whole server breathe. You're ensuring smoother performance across your entire home lab. So yeah, while some NAS setups can run a transcoder, the smart path for a high-performance setup is definitely to minimize that need as much as possible. That makes total sense. Okay, so if TrueNAS is that dependable ZFS-powered workhorse, one of the really interesting contrasts I saw in your research was 
Unraid, it doesn't use ZFS at all, right? That's a pretty okay. fundamental difference. How does its parity system actually work? And what are the trade-offs there? Right, that's a key distinction. Unraid does things differently. Instead of traditional striping like RAID, uh, RAID 1 or RAID 5, it uses this unique parity system. So imagine you have one dedicated drive, the parity drive, that holds recovery information for all your other data drives. This means you can lose any single data drive or the parity drive itself and still recover everything. And because data isn't striped across drives in that rigid way, you can mix and match drive sizes really easily. That's a huge draw. It makes it super flexible. Many find it easier to set up and manage initially. Plus, it has excellent built-in support for Docker and VMs. And yeah, it handles Apple Time Machine, SMB sharing, all that stuff, no problem. Lots of people run Unraid as a VM in Proxmox 2, again, often passing through those HPAs for better performance. I saw one note where someone called their setup incredibly stable after doing that. It just shows how adaptable these things can be in a virtual environment. The main downside, as your notes point out, Unraid isn't free. There's a license cost involved. It's not crazy expensive, but if you're watching the budget, it's definitely something you need to factor in. Yeah, that cost is always a consideration, especially for a home loan. Okay, shifting gears again, let's talk Open Media Vault. OMV, this one's Debian-based. Seems like it's often described as small but mighty, right? Especially popular in Proxmox setups because it's light and flexible. It feels like it tries to strike a balance between a ready-made solution and uh, going full DIY. What really stands out for OMV? Who's it really for? I think that tinkering potential you mentioned is exactly where OMV shines for a lot of people. Because, yeah, maybe out of the box it looks a bit more minimal compared to TrueNAS or Unraid. But it's very light on resources, which is great if you're running lots of VMs alongside it, like in your potential setup. It's got built-in RAID 1 support, handles, Time Machine, SMB, NFS, all the essentials for media and backups are there. The real advantage, though, is that it gives you a solid web interface for the common stuff. But underneath, it's just Debian Linux, pure Debian. So if you want to customize something at a very specific service or really, you know, dig into the system's config files, you absolutely can. You have the full power of the Linux command line right there. So it really brings up that question for you. How comfortable are you with getting your hands dirty on the command line versus wanting everything managed through a GUI? Right. That's a good point. And speaking of getting your hands dirty, this is where it gets even more interesting, I thought. Some folks in your notes mentioned skipping a dedicated NAS OS altogether. They've right. just turned Proxmox itself into the NAS. I have to admit, that idea kind of caught my eye. What are the pros and cons there? Making Proxmox pull double duty like that. It's definitely an approach that appeals if you value ultimate consolidation. Proxmox does have ZFS support built right in. So technically, yes, you can absolutely handle RAID 1, set up SMB, NFS, all without adding another OS layer. You'd use Proxmox's ZFS tools for your storage pools, configure SMB and NFS shares manually, maybe run Plex or Jellyfin directly in LXC containers right there on Proxmox. The upside is pretty clear. No extra VM overhead. Everything lives inside Proxbox, which can simplify management in one way. But the catch, and your sources are very clear on this, is that it's a much more manual process. You'll be editing configuration files, installing packages yourself using apt or whatever. It can be super satisfying if you love tinkering and want that absolute control. However, if you're looking for more of a you know click-and-go experience with a nice web UI for managing shares and users and everything, this route might feel like more work than you want. It really comes down to weighing that convenience against the desire for granular, low-level control. And then there's the ultimate DIY route, isn't there? For the real enthusiasts, a few people mentioned going even leaner, just running Samba on a super lightweight Linux VM or maybe even a container like Debian Minimal or Alpine Linux. You'd add software RAID using something like MDATUM or maybe use ZFS if the distro supports it well, then set up your SMB shares manually. <laughs> and that's basically it. The advantages seem obvious, absolutely minimal resource use, total control over every single thing. Remember one note described it as digital zen-like, <laughs> knowing exactly what every bit of your setup does. Yeah, that level of control is definitely appealing to a certain kind of person, certain kind of home labber. You'd use tools like MDAB, it's the standard Linux software aid utility, or like you said, ZFS if you prefer. Then you configure your shares in the Samba config files. The trade-off is just as obvious. You are doing all the heavy lifting yourself. There's no fancy web UI, no prepackaged services, clicking buttons for you. But if you genuinely enjoy building your own solutions right from the ground up, it can be, well, oddly satisfying. You're right. It gives you the deepest possible understanding of your system. It's kind of like building your own custom PC component by component versus buying a pre-built machine off the shelf. It highlights that fundamental choice again. Are you looking for a product or are you looking for a platform to build your own product from scratch? Okay, so... After digging through all these options from your notes, where does that leave us? Or rather, where does it leave you when picking your Proxmox Home Lab NAS OS? Let's just quickly recap the main players we talked about. 
Turn S, Unraid, Open Media Vault, and then those more DIY paths using Proxmox itself or just a bare bones Linux setup with Samba. So based on that cheat sheet you put together, TrueNAS seems like the rock solid ZFS workhorse. Great for data integrity, backups, media serving, but yeah, it, it, it likes its resources, especially RAM. Unraid comes across as the really flexible, uh, user-friendly option, especially if you've got a mix of different drive sizes you want to use. Just remember that license cost. Open Media Vault, that's the lightweight Debian-based one. Good for tinkerers who want a web UI to start, but like having Linux underneath. Light on resources, and then the Proxmox native or Linux plus somber routes, well, those are for the dedicated DIY folks who want total control, who enjoy building it all themselves. In the end, it really feels like the best pick, truly depends on your specific workflow, what gear you already have, like that OLED and BNO system, and honestly, just your preference. Do you want something that largely just works out of the box, like maybe TrueNAS or Unraid, or do you actually enjoy the process of a more hands-on, a customizable setup. And one last practical tip, pulled straight from your sources, especially for media streaming folks, try hard to stick to device-friendly formats, MP4, MKV, H.264, H.265 codecs. It really helps avoid those transcoding headaches. Your high-end gear, like that amazing LG OLED C4, will definitely thank you by just playing everything smoothly, natively. Exactly. And maybe the final thought to leave you with is this. Given all these choices, what does it really mean to choose? You're not just picking a tool, are you? You're kind of picking a philosophy for your home lab. Are you building for that ultimate control, maybe some bragging rights, knowing every intricate detail? Or are you prioritizing dependable, effortless performance, something that just works smoothly day to day? And maybe think about how that choice might evolve. Your needs today might be different a year from now. It's something to kind of mull over as you fine tune your perfect setup. 